Alrighty, so I've been meaning to make this video for some time now. I actually happened to catch quite a different uh, species of fish the other day, so I thought this was a good opportunity to finally clarify up and uh, make this video because I think uh, a lot of people they go fishing and uh, they use you know whatever they catch but you know they may not know the difference between this and that and that's okay but I'd like to you know make a video so that people are able to identify these fish and know exactly what they're using and uh, there's also a real benefit you can use here to uh, help you identify native fish versus non-native fish and using certain baits versus the other to help out the ecosystem in the end so that you're uh, not always using native fish when you don't have to and that's kind of what I'm going to try and get at here later in the video but anyways let's get into the topics uh, I'm gonna t I'm gonna cover just about every fish that I use for bait uh, in this video you're gonna get a million different opinions on from people on what bait works here and there and this and that in my experience a catfish is gonna eat just about any of this I've caught fish on every single fish I'm about to show you guys so let's uh, let's get in here without further ado and let's see what uh, fish we're working with so first things first um, let's go over buffalo because it's right on top here and uh, these fish have been on ice for some time now they may not be the exact same color as when you know they'd be fresh out of the water but so this here is a big mouth buffalo this is a native fish to america and uh it looks quite a bit like carp and a lot of people mistake them for carp but they are native fish and they are actually part of the sucker family these are an excellent bait i find they're you know a classic river fish not a lot of people fish for them i i actually really enjoy fishing for them you can catch them on mat crawlers usually the way you identify them from common carp is they do not have the barbels up near their mouth nor do they have any of that orangish coloration they come in a lot of different colors but gold and black is kind of you know their usual typical colors that i find the difference between smallmouth buffalo big mouth buffalo and black buffalo is very subtle the easiest way is to just go by the mouth the smallmouth buffalo has a mouth that's angled down the big mouth buffalo has one that's angled straight forward and the black buffalo has one that's kind of in between so they can be really subtle differences and they like i said they look very similar to one another but overall buffalo have take on this kind of shape and uh characteristics next up we got freshwater drum this kind of fish is kind of fairly easy to identify because it's kind of in a category of its own if you will it's got kind of a silvery color to it uh you're not really going to find them in any other kind of color really they're a real big tail fin there and a long dorsal fin going all the way down its back you can catch these on worms usually and they're they range in all different sizes. you can get them this small you can get them all the way up to 50 pounds so uh they're a fun fish to catch and sometimes i catch them you know fishing for catfish and I think they're a pretty effective bait too. I've caught some some good fish off of just using uh, chunks of freshwater drum. Very easy to identify. These are very common in all sorts of different waters. Definitely a good bait. Next up we got common carp. This fish is very often confused with others as well. Easy to identify with these big crosshatch patterns and then they always almost always have you know orange or red tint on their uh tails here uh, on their tail fin and then their lower fins typically they also can be identified they have these small you may not even be able to pick them up but they have these small barbels on their mouth as well they look quite a bit like buffalo but uh, if you look closely and look for that orange kind of coloration they you should be able to tell the difference between each of them very good bait very common in a lot of waters these can get very big as well you can catch these on corn they're a lot of fun to fight on rod and reel i've got a couple videos like way back of me fishing for these they're they're always a blast if the catfish aren't biting but excellent bait very common in the rivers definitely a, a strong catfish bait option so we have grass carp this is the vegan of the fish world this 
carp is fairly easy to identify, but it does look a little bit like the others. It's got just that usual crosshatch pattern, but these are kind of more torpedo shaped, if you will. They're uh, a lot more cylindrical and elongated than a lot of the other uh, carp species out there. So, and I'll, I'll pull out the this common carp to be shown side by side. These can easily be told the difference between typical Asian carp that you've probably heard of, the big head and the silver carp, and the fact that their scales are so much bigger than those uh, silver carp and big head carp, as well as their eyes are not on the underside of their head like the big head and the silver carp are. I don't typically catch a lot of grass carp, but when I do, they I do find that they're still a good bait for catfish they're definitely very prevalent in the rivers you can catch these on corn as well i've caught them on worms and i've even caught these on crankbaits before sometimes so you never know what you're going to catch these on but they uh definitely a unique fish and definitely can be identified but look for this long cylindrical kind of torpedo shape when trying to identify this kind of fish bluegill I don't have any to show in this video. I'll show a picture though. A classic hardy bait that's really got strong flesh and it's gonna stay on your bait good. And they're, they stay alive real well. They're a really good live bait. And there's, they're gonna be your easiest fish to catch really. I mean, they're just, you can go to a local lake or pond or something and just throw out uh, night crawlers and a bobber and you, you probably will hook into some. I've caught a lot of fish on bluegill, excellent bait. They're kind of in their own category as far as compared to other river fish. You're not really going to mix them up for any, with anything else. Now, there's a whole bunch of different sunfish. That's a whole different discussion in itself. But, but yeah, bluegill is a is a great catfish bait. Okay, so next we'll talk about gizzard shad. So here's a perfect example of what they look like. These are most people's favorite baits, and I'm not gonna lie, I've caught a lot of fish off of these as well. As you can see, they've got real small mouth, that real golden eye, and uh, they got that black spot right behind their gill plate. Now, to tell them the difference between uh, gizzard shad and threadfin shad, gizzard shad don't have that yellowish tint on their uh, fins. They also typically don't get that big either, as gizzard shad can get relatively large, up to like, you know, I've seen them go up to a pound or so, or even past that. Now, I never catch threadfin shad. I've never even seen one in my life. Some people may catch them. It just happens that where I fish and the places I get bait, I never catch threadfins and they don't have any threadfins. I'm sure, I have no doubt in my mind that they work just as good as gizzard shad. It's just not what I'm using as much. Now, skipjack herring is, um, is another excellent bait but I typically don't ever catch them live. The only time I ever use them is in the winter and I use them as frozen bait because I buy them. It's definitely a, a good bait that preserves really well compared to a lot of other fish. It stays really oily and it, I find it to be an excellent winter bait. But gizzard shad, have uh, they have real oily flesh so they give off a lot of scent. They make it, they're, they're a real good catfish bait. Uh, you know, a lot of people will say that it's their favorite catfish bait, and rightly so. It, it's traditionally the main forage fish on most, on most rivers. Gizzard shad can be either real easy or real difficult to find. Depends on the time of year and where you're at. They're filter feeders, so you really aren't going to catch them on hook and line. You're going to typically have to catch them in a cast net. So. That's another thing that makes them a little bit difficult. I know skipjack you can catch with lures, but um, stretches of river I fish, they just, I, I never really fish for them and I never caught one. But once you locate the shad, usually uh, they're, they, they school quite a bit. So they're, once you find one, you might find some more. Okay, so next we'll uh, dig into talking about Asian carp. And when I say Asian carp, I mean, it's actually, referring to two different fish. There's the silver carp and the big head carp. These are two uh, easily confused fish, especially with shad. But one way to really identify them is with the eyes underneath their mouth. These are really invasive fish. 
A lot of people kind of have a stigma against them for not being an effective bait. I think they do catch good fish. I just don't think they preserve that well and they don't last that long after being caught fresh. Real small scales and they got big mouths. The big head carp's got a little bit bigger of a mouth than uh, silver carp, but they both have much bigger mouths than shad. And so that's one way you can use to identify them. But yeah, they're a good catfish bait. I think uh, they definitely, I've definitely caught some real nice fish on them. And one thing I do want to push in this video is when you have the opportunity to take uh, invasive fish versus native ones, I highly advocate taking as many invasive fish as you can to help balance out the ecosystem. I mean, I usually, if I catch a bunch of carp, I will throw back quite a few native fish just to try and help balance the ecosystem. So definitely would recommend doing that. You know, it's not gonna have a huge effect on a small scale with you just you doing it, but hey, a lot of people are catfishing now. You know, if everybody did that, you know, maybe maybe we can make an impact. We'll see where it goes, but I don't know, that's my take on it. Even if you're not gonna use them, you might as well, you know, take them as a backup bait just in case you need it. You know, the more we can get rid of, the better. There are several other fish that I didn't get into talking about, like carp suckers. Um, there's three different kinds of carp suckers. There's river carp sucker, high fin carp sucker, and the quillback. These again are very difficult to identify between amongst each other, but you can tell them a little bit different from like buffalo and such because they have a little bit smaller of a mouth than uh, buffalo usually. And they usually have a bit more of a white coloration to them. They're also part of the sucker family. I use them whenever I catch them, but I don't catch them quite often, so. And then there's also moon eye and gold eye. Hardly ever catch those, but they, I've heard a lot of people say they're real good baits. Um, they're real oily, just like shad and skipjack, so if you catch those, those can be real good baits as well. Occasionally, I'll catch white sucker and I'll use those. Um, I don't really ever catch red horse around here. I would say that's about it. So now that we know all these baits and these different kind of fish, what should we do with trying to catch them? Well, it depends on where you're at, what you're trying to get, and what's the most prevalent fish in your local waters. I would say a great place to start looking if you're trying to go on a river is um, Oxbow Lakes and Feeder Creeks. Both of these spots are more often than not where I'm catching my bait and they're usually loaded with little bite-sized fish that are the perfect size for catfishing. Uh, you, can, you can know if a lake is an oxbow lake if there's surrounding river nearby or by checking up on the lake and seeing if it's stocked with certain fish. Go to those lakes and spots you wanna target are typically passages where the, where the creek narrows up. Sometimes there's culverts at the end of it in the best case scenario is there's flowing water coming out of a culvert or a spillway and that's a great place where bait fish love to uh, concentrate at and you can throw a net and catch a bunch of fish or you can go there with hook and worm and hopefully hook into plenty of bait fish other places to look are along riprap a lot of fish love to hang out along that so that's another great place to try but it's all seasonal and it's all dependence now a lot of you will be thinking Man, this is taking a lot of investigation. This is taking a lot of work and, you know, not having a lot of time to go fishing. Well, yeah, <laughs> it is a lot of work. It's one of the biggest parts of catfishing is catching your bait. That's and that but that's the difference between cat fishermen and other types of fishermen because you're not showing up with a box of lures. You're showing up with fresh bait. Sometimes I'll go to a place and I'll throw cast net a million times and catch nothing. Other places I'll catch them first try. Uh, it's just gonna come into how well do you know the areas around you and putting in the time to find out what's in certain lakes and what's not in there. And figuring out also where the fish are most of the time and where they're not. Hopefully making the future something a bit more in depth, you know, examples of what I'm talking about but that should get you started. But anyways, um, if there's anything I haven't covered in this video yet, feel free to let me know and I can always answer questions. And uh, you know, ask me, ask me how I feel about uh, a bait here, there, or this time of year, and I will let you know my own personal experience. Everybody's gonna have their own different experience with baits, so the best thing you can start doing is just experimenting with uh, different ones and, 
and uh, learning what works best for you. I hope this is beneficial and that you learned something out of this and that you can know what kind of fish you're dealing with now, have a better idea of what's in the river, and uh, that way you can always be up to date with regulations and know exactly what they're talking about. Remember to keep non-native fish as much as you can. It's helping out the ecosystem of all bodies of water. And uh, hope to catch you next time. And thanks for watching.